you want me to go ahead and get started? Oh, okay. I do multi I gotcha. Well, good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today. Um, we're excited to have Emory Henry um, lead this and uh, our friend Amanda Gardner. Uh, for those that are watching online, if you have questions throughout the uh, stream, please um, put that in the chat and we will share that with Amanda. But, you know, Emory Henry is a strong partner for um, Washington County and the incubator here in the chamber and they've been a partner with us in the business challenge with the awards will be announced tomorrow. So. Uh, Amanda, I'm going to turn it over for you, and thanks again for coming. Thank you, Sandy. I really appreciate being here, and thank you to those who are able to come in today, and for those um, that are uh, live streaming. Is it okay to say, can I get a shout out on the live stream if you are out there and you're watching us? Um, we'd love to have some uh, some love shown our way, so let us know that you're watching, and uh, we'll go from there. And uh, so. Uh, Appreciate that you all saw the flyer, that you're here, and so um, let's get started. And I think I'm right in the way. So I like to provide an agenda for you guys so you know what we're going to be talking about. Um, and uh, that way you can stop me if you have questions. And uh, so today we are going to um, start with what is an internship? How do we define it? What are the benefits? to the student, to the employer. Were they gonna break it down for our employers um, on an internship how-to? So I'm interested in an internship, but how do I even start that process? Um, I am gonna show a couple of slides um, and some information on our particular internship program at Emory & Henry, which I have a feeling is probably very similar to the, some of the schools um, also in this area. And then I think we've saved the best for last. We have four students from Emory and Henry who are going to sit on a student panel and would love to get your questions. So as you guys are listening to the presentation, I'd love for you to have some questions for our students um, at the end. Okay, I hate slides that are so um, wordy, but there's really no way around it. So let's take a look at how the National Association of Colleges and Employers defines an internship. And there's really no other way but for me to read it, and we'll talk a little bit about that. And please, you guys stop me if you have any questions. Um, so it's defined as an, in an internship is a form of experiential learning that integrates knowledge and theory learned in the classroom with practical application and skills development in a professional setting. Internships give students the opportunity to gain valuable applied experience and make connections in professional fields they are considering for career paths and give employers the opportunity to guide and evaluate talent. What, is, what does that mean? What is it saying? Um, in a nutshell, internships are academic experiences that allow students to go out into the working world and test it out under the guidance of the college, under the guidance of administration, um, and then they get to come back and evaluate if that's something that they're interested in or not interested in. And I am happy to share uh, my PowerPoint with you all um, so that you don't have to uh, write everything down, but you'll notice that I put some keywords in gray um, just to make them stand out a little bit. Um, you'll hear the words experiential learning when you hear internships, and experiential means going out and experiencing it outside of the classroom. Have any of you all thought about this particular question? What's the difference between an internship and a part-time job and a volunteer opportunity? H how do you differentiate between those? And I've got some additional um, points that I want to share with you guys about how an internship is different from just a, and, and I don't want to say just a part-time job because part-time jobs are awesome. <laughs> how many of y'all in the room have had a part-time job before? Okay. How many of y'all worked through school, like college, like you did student employment or had a job? Okay. Did you learn some things from that experience? I hope so. Can I can I get a, an amen over here? <laughs> so, so internships versus part-time job. Here's what sets an internship apart. And so as I read through these, think about, okay, I, 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 hopefully you can see the difference. First and foremost, an internship is an extension of the classroom. 
okay? So once again, it's that learning experience. What are the students learning in the classroom and how can that be applied into the working world? An internship also allows for skills and knowledge that are learned at the work site to be transferable to other employment settings, okay? So it's not just this employer teaches me this and I have to stay at this employer. It's, it's providing those skills that um, can be transferable. Here's another thing about internships. They have a defined beginning and an end, okay? They also have a job description with desired qualifications. Okay. So all of the students that you're going to hear from later did an internship over the course of a semester. So there was a start date and an end date. We knew that there was going to be a cutoff. A part-time job could be short-term, but it could also go on um, for an extended period of time. Um, let's see, the fourth one, defined learning objectives. If you all decide to participate with um, an internship program with a lo local college or university, you're going to find that we are going to ask you all and the students to come up with learning objectives. What do you want the student to get out of this experience? What does the student want to get out of the experience? Because in the end, we all want to make sure that, that we're getting out of it what we need um, to get out of it. Um, okay, I, I keep saying all of these important, are important, but this one is, is super important. An internship is different from a part-time job because there is a designated professional with the expertise at that, at that employer that works directly with that student. So it's not like, here's a job we want you to do, go do it. It's come along, let me mentor you, let me show you how to work and do this job, and then maybe you give the student a little bit of leeway to participate in that. Routine feedback, okay? So an internship is going to require that, you know, at least midway through the internship, that there's a sit down, there's a formal, let me give you some feedback about how this, um, this is going for you, how you can improve, so forth and so on. And there are resources, equipment, and facilities provided by the host employer that support learning objectives and goals, okay? So we'll talk about this a little bit later. That doesn't mean that you have to provide them with everything, but they need to have a space. They need to know how they are part um, of the experience and, um, so forth and so on. Any questions so far? These are also um, outlined on the National Association of Colleges Employers um, website, and I'm happy to share this with you as well. Okay. <clears throat> and for those of you all that have just joined us, feel free. We've got lunch provided. Shout out to Sodexo. Thank you so much. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the benefits of an internship as it relates to the student and then as it relates to the employer. And then we're going to take a step-by-step -step through how to actually implement an internship program. Okay. So student benefits. First and foremost, um, classroom application. Okay. I'm in the classroom, I'm learning great things, I'm getting a great education, but I really want to test it out. I want to see how it looks out in um, the real world. One of my favorite things about working directly with the internship program, I don't even know that I introduced myself at the very beginning about what I do, <laughs> um, but I'll revisit that in just a minute. But career exploration, sending our students out, having these great experiences, and then talking with them afterwards. How, how has this changed your career trajectory? Um, I love it when students come back and they're like, oh my word, and they call me Miss Gardner. Oh my word, Miss Gardner, this was a great experience. This is exactly what I want to do for the rest of my life. But I also consider it positive when a student comes back and says, glad I did that now. I never want to do that again in my entire life. And that's that safety belt or the safety disc of an internship. There's a start, there's an end, and there's clarification. Work experience. I recently heard a survey that said employers who are looking to hire a recent graduate, 90% of them look specifically for work experience on the resume. I mean, that's kind of a given, right? You, you want someone who has some experience. 70% of this over 50,000 employers that were surveyed, 70% said, I specifically look for an internship. Okay, there's parameters, there's guidelines and I know the type of experience. Networking, okay, 
An internship provides students that opportunity to learn the people in a business, but it also teaches them how to just interact with professionals, how to ask for things, how to proceed in their career. We don't guarantee this, but so many employers will hire their interns. Okay, Why, why do you think the number is very high on that? It's, it, it fluctuates between 60 and 70 percent of students who complete an internship get a job offer from that employer. Anybody, why, why do you think that's so high? That's the audience participation time. Because <laughs> they build a relationship with them and they've learned how that business works. Absolutely, absolutely. You, you have that opportunity to see if this is a good fit. Okay, so I talked about the student benefits. What do, what do employers get out of this um, experience? This is one of my first, fav my favorite ones. Cost-effective short-term employment, okay? A lot of times my employers say, you know, Amanda, I've got a great opportunity. I'm happy to provide support, mentorship, professional development for the student. We don't have a line item for that, for that individual or that internship, but we're happy to provide that support. Sometimes getting an intern in, seeing how they work, can actually encourage some line items to open up. Do you, you know what I'm saying? That it's like, well, we have had this student who has helped us with this. Can we not look to bring them on part-time or full-time? I, I can't guarantee that. Y'all are like, yay, more money. I can't guarantee that. We love working with you all as our employers because it truly does strengthen the relationship between our college, our students, our faculty, our staff, and what you all are doing in the community. We want to be a pipeline for great talent to come to your employ employers. So that is, is definitely a key. I love this last bullet point here because it's just what we talked about. You guys have an opportunity to test out a potential employee via an internship, okay? Look at this. Internships are called 90-day interviews. I love that, okay? Internships are typically three months, 90 days. Can you tell in 90 days if someone might be a good fit for your organization? So before I start and move forward with some how-tos, if you're thinking about an intern um, or I'd like to have a part-time person, how do I differentiate that? Does anybody have any questions for me? Any Facebook questions? Any Facebook shout-outs? No, just some folks that says, hello, we're out here. Woo, yay! I get super excited. I don't know if you all can, can sense that. My students are like, calm it down, Ms. Gardner. <laughs> um, before I launch into this, let me just reiterate, um, we are from Emory and Henry College. We are promoting our students, of course, but we want students, regardless of where they are, to be able to take advantage of internship opportunities. I am the Director of Career Services at Emory and Henry College. Um, this June, I will have been at Emory and Henry for 13 years. Um, whoo, um, they do let me go home on the weekends sometimes, and um, prior to that I worked at Radford University, and prior to that I worked at Virginia Tech, so um, this, has been, this has been a great place. No questions? Okay, I'm going to keep going. So, I am an employer, I am thinking, hey, this lady's making some sense, I'm considering an internship. Here are some things I want you to do as you prepare for this. Step one is key. Survey your company. What do I mean? Can we use an intern? Okay. Do we have projects and things that students can work on that we can keep them busy? <clears throat> this is super key as well. Do we have time for an intern? Okay. I um, have uh, had multiple internships in my life. When I went to grad school, we had required internships. And I had some great internships, and then I had some where I was like, nobody has time for me, I'm here. So one of the things you need to think about is do we have time to provide that educational opportunity for a student? Another great question, are there areas we need a full-time employee that we could maybe slide an intern in? Test the waters. Um, could we rotate an intern throughout several departments of the company? So maybe you all are working and you say, 
I could probably support 20 hours of work for an intern, but down the hall, they may have a need as well, and that might give students a really cool view of what an employer does. One of my favorite examples, uh, we had a student who was interested in um, going to medical school. She was a biology major. And she came to me and she was like, Miss Gardner, I would like to do an internship in the medical field. Okay, this is an undergrad. They've not started medical school. I can't get them an internship where they're gonna be hands on with people. Do you, do you want a sophomore in college operating on you? I would trust all of you all. But <laughs> so I worked with a local uh, medical um, company who runs um, urgent care facilities. And I said, can I get this student in to shadow some doctors, also shadow some nurses? And they're like, we could probably do that. And I said, but I also want the student to work at the front desk. I want them to rotate and understand how insurance works. I want them to know customer service. They were able to rotate that student and give them that experience where otherwise they would say, I can't you know, have a student shadow with, an, with a, a doctor the whole time. Will this be a paid and or for credit internship? Okay, so an internship, when we hear the word internship, we tend to go with it's for academic credit, meaning there's checks and balances. We will work with you all to help provide the student an opportunity. The student registers for internship credit. Okay, doesn't mean they can't be paid as well. <clears throat> Step two, so you have surveyed your company, you feel like they, I, I think we can make something happen here. I think we can support an intern. Create a job description, very key, okay? So include as much detail as possible. I mean, you know how, how job descriptions work. So many times I get job postings from employers who say, we want an intern, okay? Well, I, I can help you with that. You, you've given me the details, but how do you want a student to apply? Please consider an intern as you would a full-time employee. Ask them to submit a resume. Ask them to submit cover letters if need be. Fill out an application. Okay. What's the time frame? Well, we'll look at that in just a moment. Do you need someone for three months? Do you need someone for a year? Think about your need. Are you seeking specific skills, knowledge, or abilities? Okay. These students are students, so they can't come in with four years of knowledge with this, this um, type of product or technology. Um, but are they willing to learn? Put that in the job description and we can help you facilitate that. Once again, ask that and, and let us know, is it paid, unpaid, or for academic experience? Please share the job descriptions with colleges and universities in the area. I know that seems kind of, well, duh, but if you let us know, if you work with us, we're on the front lines with the students, okay? So share that with us, and that way we can also ask you any questions um, before posting those opportunities. Any questions? We good? Okay. Did she just put another plug in for career services at colleges and universities? Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. <laughs> You as employers have immediate access to the career services folks at your colleges and universities. What, what do career services folks do? How many of you all, when you all were in college, went to your career services office? Wow, hey, all my students have been to the career <laughs> services office. What does the career services office do? Okay, they help students write resumes, cover letters, get experience, work with internships, work with student um, employment, prepare for graduate school, okay? So they're the pipeline for all of these students. So please work with your career services offices at respective colleges. Reach out to us so that we can share with you any specifications that we have for our specific program. So you know, okay, at Emory & Henry, all I have to do is get that to Amanda Gardner, and I know she's going to do this, this, and this with it. The students are going to be primed and ready. At King, here's how I need to approach them, so forth and so on. Okay? So just to ascertain who, what, when, and where.
So you know that you need an intern or you want an intern, okay? You got an idea, you know the job description. Assign someone specifically to work with this student. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my own personal internship experience. I remember one internship where once again I was like, I don't feel like I'm quite belonging. It's not that I had to have my own office, but I just needed to know where my space was. And I never knew from day to day who I was reporting to. And that created a lot of kind of frustration with me. So you as the employer, assign someone to be the intern manager slash mentor. Um, the research I did um, kind of, one of the things that they suggested was maybe a junior employee, someone who, not that us that have been working for 20 years can't be mentors, but sometimes it's neat to have someone who is not, uh, what's the word, not quite as seasoned, um, but maybe someone who's eager to help the next generation um, come on in there. Once again, ensure that that person has time in their schedule to devote to the student, okay? Have the student check in with them, what's the protocol. Arrange for the intern manager to meet with the intern to talk about some of that office protocol, what to wear, what not to wear, um, expectations and assignments. Okay. Um, nod your head if you're thinking, okay, I, I have an idea of someone in my, in my employment that I think would be a really good fit, an intern manager or a mentor. Maybe it's you. Let's sign you up. <clears throat> so imagine me several years ago. I'm an intern. I want to do my best job. And I walked in, and every day I had a little crate with my files because I never knew if I had this space. Are y'all are y'all sad for me? Am I painting a picture? <laughs> and then the next day I take my files and go over here which was fine, it worked out, I got to work with some great pe people, but I would have felt a little bit more close to the employer if they had been able to find me a space. Mm -hmm. Okay, that, you know, it doesn't have to be beautiful. A cubicle can be awesome, okay? Um, I, I love to put pictures in my, in my uh, PowerPoints, and there's a whole, per there's a person on Pinterest that just does fun ideas for cubicles. I got distracted, I will tell you, for a little bit, because there was one with like cat paws on it. Oh, it was just awesome. But the intern having a place, having access to supplies. How many of y'all have a stapler and tape on your desk right now? Okay. What if you didn't have that? What if you didn't know where that was? Would that be a little frustrating? Ensure that from day one, the intern has the access they need to hit the ground running, okay? I'm not saying open up all of your security <laughs> and technology and be like, here you go. Um, but if you want the intern to have their own email address with your company or organization, make sure that's set up and ready to go, okay? There's nothing worse than being a student, being so excited about getting started, and it's like, oh, didn't get that set up, we don't have that ready for you. Um, so just some things to think about. And I'm gonna give you permission to laugh at the next photo for step number six. Ugly holiday sweater party, anybody? Okay. Why do I have this? Why do I have this photo? One, isn't that a great photo? I just love that. <laughs> step number six. Include the intern from day one. What do I mean by that? One, send an email out or put a flyer up to let everybody know in the office or in your company that there's an intern coming. So that the intern's not walking down the hallway and people are like, sketchy at 12 o'clock. You know what I'm saying? They know that that's a student. Was that funny? Sorry. Uh, <laughs> that they know the student's gonna be there. Who's gonna be their supervisor? What time frame is the student gonna be working there? I have yes. a question. Yay! Someone's asking, what employer in the area is a good role model when it comes to robust internship programs and why? Wow. Um, I don't know that I can, I don't know that I can say names, um, but we have some great employers that we work with that have created a relationship with our college. So we know that when they send us an announcement, 
we know it's going to be a good ex experience. They meet with faculty on our campus, which if you all are like, well, I really want to target business students or I really want to target your sociology students, let me know and I will set up an appointment for you to meet with that faculty member who can walk you through what their students are learning in the classroom and how that might benefit you. Okay, so that's, that's one of the things about a great internship employer. They fill out the paperwork, they do evaluations of the students, there is just a, we, we get them in, we get them out, great experiences. So, great question. Please keep them coming. Um, ensure the intern knows about office events and gatherings. That doesn't mean you have to invite your interns to everything that you all do. But how sad would that be that you're having this person work with you and then they're like, well, I, I didn't know about that. Or someone was throwing a shower for someone. I, I didn't know about that. Maybe consider a meet and greet on the intern's first day, or if you have a space for the student, welcome them, some swag, or you know what I mean when I say swag, like a pin from your company, or a cool folder. Um, and then think of ways to recognize the intern for good work. You will do that hopefully for your employers, your employees. Interns really need that encouragement. And if I didn't answer that person's question, I'm happy to uh, be reached out to um, via, via email. We can talk more. Questions about things you need to be thinking about as it relates to internships, starting an internship with your company or organization. So I'm going to briefly describe the internship program at Emory and Henry College so you can get an idea of how they typically work. And then we're going to bring our students up. And I hope you guys have been thinking about some questions that you want to ask um, the students. So the Emory and Henry College internship program is academically based. So we are assisting students in getting academic credit to go out and test the career field. Time frame. Our internships are semester long internships. There's some give and take of, about the start and the finish, but we are very semester run. So for instance, we're in spring semester and it's March. How many months have we been in school already? January, February, we're, I mean these students are looking forward to the end of the semester. And I got a call the other day from, a, from an employer who said, oh I want an intern right now. Yay! I'm so excited that you want one of our students because I think it's going to be great. But we're going to have to look for summer. Okay, we're going to have to look at it as a summer opportunity so we have time to reach out to students and help them navigate that process. Okay. Once again, I'll share this so you guys have an idea of when our semesters start and end. But it is a semester-long academic experience. Well, how many hours are our is your student going to be at my facility? We break it down this way. For each credit hour that the student registers for an internship, we ask that they work 40 hours at the internship site, okay? Most of our students register for a three credit internship. Let's do some math, 120 hours. If you break it down over the course of a semester, it's about eight to 10 hours of work per week. Okay, 120 hours seems like a lot, but when you break it down, about eight to 10 hours of work. I couldn't think of a better way to term this, but it is a triangular relationship. So we don't want you to think, well, I'm going to post an internship, I'm going to get a student, and then I take it from there. You enter into a relationship with the college, okay? So you have the student intern. You guys are going to meet and talk about the internship. But you also have a faculty member and a college administrator with the internship program to work with to help make sure, okay, are we checking all the boxes? Are we making sure that this is truly an internship and not just a volunteer opportunity or a part-time job? Both great opportunities, but an internship has that separate step as well. And then that checks and balances. So we have paperwork for you guys. We have evaluations for you to complete so that we make sure that you're getting out of it what you need and the students are getting out of it what they need. Questions about the Emory and Henry College internship program? I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, the hours. Yes. Eight to 10 hours per week. I know 100 years ago when I graduated, my intern was the whole
whole semester, no classes. Yes. So of course they're in classes as well. So the employer needs to be flexible to work around their class schedule. Yes, I really appreciate that. Let me repeat that question. So the, it, the question pertains to um, the intern is coming and they're not working full time with you for the semester. Yes, so typically for fall and spring semesters, let's kind of focus in on that. Our interns are typically taking other classes in addition to your internship. So that is another, another piece of that. So we ask that you be open and conducive to working with the student's schedules, okay? Especially if you find a really great student, they're gonna be like, let me lay out my schedule for you, and here are some pockets, but you've already built that relationship with that student, you feel like it's a good fit, you're gonna be willing to work with them. Summer provides a little bit more flexibility for our interns, okay? So that might allow them to work more hours. Maybe they get rid of, or get, take care of our hours very quickly, but you've hired them full time for the summer. That's how we work. We are not a co-op college where students will leave the semester and go work and come back. Ours is, I think they call it like a parallel, so they're taking classes and doing the internship as well. Does that answer yes. your question? Thank you. Great. Okay. Y'all are keeping all of your questions for the students. I know, I feel the excitement in the room. So I'm going to go ahead and have um, my students come on up here to these four chairs. So um, this would be a great time for people on Facebook to send us some questions. So y'all come on up here and have a seat. And Sandy, let us know if you can't hear them or... Um, is it too much to ask for us to give these students a round of applause? They are taking time out of their busy schedules to come and share because one, who asked you to come and do this? I did. <laughs> <laughs> they came and they're really excited about sharing their experience. I've got their basic information up here. I did not put Christina's graduation date correctly on here. She is actually also a 2019 soon to be graduate. Um, so I want us to start um, right here with Moises, and I want for each of you to say your name, your hometown, your major minors, and where you've completed your internship, or in some cases, internships. So we'll start right here with Moises. Well, hello, my name is Moises Martinez. I'm from Gomez Palacio, Durango, Mexico. Uh, I completed, well, I'm a business and economics major, and I completed internships with NFI Consumer Products in Bristol, Tennessee, and I'm currently doing an internship with um, Lawson Hatch Financial Advisors. I'm Christina Mitchell. I'm from Lebanon, Virginia. I'm a mass communications major with a minor in politics and society. I completed my internship with the NASA Glenn Research Center. I'm Sarah Ingram. I'm from Knoxville, Tennessee. I'm a psychology major with a biology minor. I completed an internship over the summer at Woodrow Wilson Rehab Center in Stanton, Virginia, and then in Abington at Abington Health and Rehab. Hi, I'm Angie Borchert. I am a double major in psychology and business management. Um, I'm from Asheville, North Carolina. I did my internship with the Human Resources Office at Emory Henry College um, fall of 17. <laughs> do y'all have any questions or do you want me to get the ball rolling with this? So guys, can you tell me, um, each of you all, uh, tell me a little bit about what you worked on at the internship. So maybe pick a couple of things that really stand out in your mind that you worked on. And when you say that, if you'll just remind them where you did that internship at. Does anybody want to start? <laughs> so, um, again, I did my internship at the Human Resources Office at Emory Henry College. Um, I'm still actually currently doing it as a work study, but I did a lot of data entry and filing when I first started until they taught me the system we used. And by doing that, she took like two weeks um, to teach me the system, and then I now free up a lot of her time by. <laughs> 
um, knowing how to use it. So it's just a lot of that. <laughs> Um, I did both of my internships within occupational therapy, so a lot of that was just participating in therapy sessions. Um, when I was at Woodrow Wilson, it was a lot of young adults, and my supervisor allowed me to be really in the therapy sessions, really participate with them. Um, she said that was more like a therapy tool. Um, most of the students there um, are coming off out of high school and have some, t some type of like social interactions um, that are difficult for them so I was able to like really offer that therapeutic kind of relationship um, and just come up with different ways to like I don't know it was it, yeah <laughs> okay so uh, my internship my focus was planning the inventor recognition ceremony for the technology transfer office at the NASA Glenn Research Center. Um, so my primary job was planning the entire event, presentation, writing the scripts. I there were 93 inventors being recognized, so I verified all the data for their patent applications, patents issued, software releases, internal and external awards. Um, and then I went around to the various labs on base photographing them, and in my spare time for my internship, I also assisted with press releases and feature stories that were published by the center. Well, with my internship with NFI, um, what I did was, I was a sales and marketing intern, and I worked in different projects uh, dealing with the retailers that we had to uh, supply, so I did some um, gap analysis, I did some profit per inch, um, analysis and I also help with tapping into the new growing Hispanic market for, for the company. Question, um, did employers seek you, um, seek feedback from you of how, first of all, did they um, do a good training, free training for you, um, always there to kind of guide you and counsel you? It's not like they just sit you in front of a desk and say, go for it. Did, did you feel like you were getting good feedback and, and help from employers? Would you like me to repeat the question? Um, can they hear you? Okay. They should be able to hear me. But okay. <laughs> so the, the question um, is, um, what kind of training were you provided you know, by the employer? How did they bring you into the fold? How did they get you going with your internship? Well, definitely. I think that they really helped us. Uh, just they got... They gave me a guidance on what I was supposed to do, and they also tell me, as Amanda said, they gave me a space and where to work, and they told me what they were expecting of me. They helped me through different projects, and it was not just, here's the project you have to do. It was, here's the project and why this is important for the company. Uh, for example, let's do a cost analysis. Why is this important? Well, this might produce this much revenue for the company, and this might help us in this way. Therefore, we need you to focus on this specific um, attributes of such project, which was just really nice to understand. Because it helps you not uh, just understand the project you're doing, but what the interests of the company are. And not just their company, but just the whole market in general. When I got my internship offer, I was contacted by my mentor very shortly after with information. Uh, here's sort of what your internship is going to look like. Here's information about what the technology transfer office is and what we do. Um, and here's kind of a background for the event, because it was the fifth time that they'd hosted that particular event. And so then when I got there, I already had some background information to work with. And then there was a couple days of extensive trainings for NASA as a whole and that all the interns were required to go through. Um, but as I started working, I was more handed projects said, okay, here's a project, here's this broad overview of what we kind of want from it, go be creative. So for both of my internships, I was provided a supervisor that I pretty much stayed with the majority of the time. Um, I was able to observe them within the therapy sessions, see what they do based on like paperwork, insurance, that sort of thing. 
Um, they both explained everything that they were doing a lot, which was great. Um, and then kind of individually, I was able to see projects that they were needed to have done, but just didn't have the time to do it kind of thing. So I was able to take that and one of the things I did was uh, make sensory tools for kids that need sensory, more sensory input. So I was able to uh, sew that um, and make a few like lap pads and that sort of thing. So yeah. Um, for my internship, I uh, originally started in her office at a little desk in the corner just so it's easier to access her. She was easy, easily accessible to me. I could just, hey, what's going on? I don't understand this. She was willing to help me. And once I understood what I was doing and she felt comfortable and I felt comfortable, I actually got a whole office to myself. So she could work and I could work, but we're also right around the corner from each other where, hey, I don't understand this right now. Um, but I think that that helped a lot. And she also took the time to like work with me from the beginning, which helped in the long run, where I did ask all my questions right then and there. So then later on, I was like, all right, I got it. I can do it. <laughs> Question, was there ever a time when you felt like there was something you could do and wanted to do because it would advance your knowledge, but just simply weren't able to do or weren't to do. Let me repeat the question. So uh, the question is, were, were there times maybe you saw, and, and please tell me if I don't, don't paraphrase this correctly, were there uh, projects that you wanted to get involved in that you couldn't, maybe you, you didn't feel like you were given the authority to do that or didn't have time to do? You saw a need and you're like, oh, I can't, I can't quite get there. So. For me, at least being in the Human Resources Office and being a student at the college, there was some conflict of interest where I couldn't help in, and or participate in because I would know too much or, you know, the confidentiality part of it. So, there, I mean, I understand that completely. I did feel, hey, I can help, but I really couldn't, so. I can't really think of anything that I wasn't able to do that I really, like, was wanting to do. Um, there. I was at Abingdon Health and Rehab, which deals with a uh, geriatric clientele, um, and I wasn't, I was told originally, like, um, only, like, nurses' aides and that sort of thing could, like, help move patients um, for, like, lifting and that sort of thing, and I wasn't able to participate in that for, like, insurance purposes, but it didn't really impinge on the internship as a whole. Um, I can't really think of a time when I was told, no, let's not have you do that project. Uh, for me, as long as I was continuing to hit the checkpoints on the event planning and move along with the photographs and such, I, uh, can, I helped out the photographer who was working on the 2019 NASA Tech Transfer calendar. So some of those photos that I took ended up in, in the calendar. Um, I expressed early on my interest in science communication. I was like, I really enjoy, you know, getting the technical pieces and then translating that down. Even though that was not related to my internship, there was someone in the office who put me in contact with someone in the media office who sent me probably half a dozen various technical things and was like, try your hand at this, see if you can get it down. Uh, I was able to assist another intern with a video project who didn't necessarily have the skills to do that on their own. Uh, so as long as I was continuing to check off the boxes on my internship, they let me go out and do projects. And sometimes that meant working longer days, but they really gave me a lot of flexibility. I kind of think of a time as well that I was not allowed to do something that I wanted to do. Uh, of course, there were certain things that legally I'm not allowed to do in both cases with, the, uh, with NFI, with uh, financial services. There's things that I just cannot do. But however, I was never limited. I was, I would always learn about what they were doing. Yes, you cannot do this, but we can teach you what we're doing and guide you what, what it is. And I, that's something that I really appreciated because I understood that legally I'm not allowed to do this. But the fact that they're explaining it to me so that I already my knowledge which is great. Okay. Okay.
questions? My question, um, how did you get your internship? Did you seek it out like a job seeker or is there a pool of employers the college has? Um, how did you go about getting it? So qu re repeating the question, how did you actually find your internship or internships? So I was just looking for jobs in general, like career path, and I found human resources. And I actually went and talked to Amanda Garner. I was like, this is kind of what I'm feeling. This is what I want to lean toward. Um, so she helped me set up just an interview with our human resources. And I talked to her, and I threw out the possibility of having an internship. And she was like, yeah, we'll do it. We'll do it. Sounds good. So I, that's how I actually ended up with my internship. So she's my first internship, and I was her first intern. So it was. It actually worked out really well. <laughs> um, both times I started talking with Ms. Gardner. <laughs> I didn't pay them to say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, my, <pattern. laughs> my first internship, I my freshman year I came in and took a class on uh, pre-health care development, I think. Um, and my advisor was the professor of the course, and he mentioned that uh, Courtney Halsey, she had graduated a couple years before me. She had, my freshman year, she was finishing up her doctorate at OT school. So I reached out to her um, during that class and did like a little interview on like what she does day to day, that sort of thing. And then later on when I was looking for an internship, um, I just kind of emailed her, reached out, and she allowed me to come and do an internship with her. And then the second time, um, I went to Ms. Gardner and my advisor, and he has a list of um, OTs in the area that he has used in the past. So I got the names and numbers and just reached out to each one. Well, uh, I'm gonna break the pattern here <laughs> yeah, because- it's, a, it's okay to break that pattern. <laughs> I actually never spoke to Ms. Gardner about internships before I got mine. Um, I actually found out that NASA even had internships when I went to a local fair. It was the NASA Langley Research Center Centennial, so they had a trailer there. They were talking to people. So I spent probably two hours there hanging out with the people at NASA, and they, and by the time it was over, they were like, here's a website. You need to go apply and come work for us. So I logged onto the website. I filled out the series of questions and it was a lot of hoops to jump through for that application process um, and then I applied to the maximum amount of internships that you could apply for on that website and I got an email about five months later because it takes a long time to get hired at NASA um, I got an email saying that I'd been accepted and had a few days to you know, get back to them with my decision. So I accepted it, and then I got in touch with Ms. Gardner and was like, hey, I've got this internship, so. Was that at a career fair, or? No, it was at, an, like, I think it was the Wise County Fair. Oh. Mine is also <laughs> different, I guess, where it's played. Uh, but it might, was kind of, I would say, networking. I had this person who I knew from church was working with the company, and when I asked and see if he had any opportunities, I know they have done it once in the past, so I just asked, and this current internship where I'm doing it was recommended through a professor, Adam McHenry, which um, they had also done it in the past, she recommended it. I don't really have a question, I just decided to ask it Brandy, Virginia, uh, that did her internship with Southwest, Southwestern Bell Corporation in downtown St. Louis, who was watching the, the Cardinals practice on uh, one window and watching the barges go through and driving downtown. A, I thought I always wanted to work in a big city, but those three months made me realize I want to come back home. <laughs> but it also helped mature and, um, I guess, put into practice what um, some of the things, you know, with you're in school, so you don't always, things don't click. Well, why am I learning this? But things started clicking, so it's a, it was a great opportunity, and it was thanks to a cousin of mine that worked at Southwestern Bell that I was able to get it. Uh, I wasn't lucky enough to have a, a college at the time that had a strong career.
career studies or helped with that. But um, that's very, it was very impactful. Now, I did have a question from okay. somebody online. Great. Um, and it's really towards you, Amanda. How many internships are recommended now for a resume or suggested? Um, so the question is, how many internships are, rec are, are recommended? Um, I, I think one is the magical number. Um, so have at least one internship opportunity. And let me just state that it's, it's really more of a career-related experience, which could come in the um, form of, a, of an internship, which we've talked about today. But um, I don't know about you all. I think I had you all raise your hand. I got a lot of great experience on my college campus being a student employee because my first job uh, as a student employee was not, not spectacular, but I showed that I was a good worker. And then they started working with me and helping me find offices to work with. And people, when I started applying for jobs, saw that and they noticed it. So please. I think at least one internship is, is great. You've heard from some of these. Uh, Moises is on his third internship, correct? Um, and uh, Sarah's had two, but one can, can be a life changer um, as well. Thank you for that question. Uh, another question for you. Please. Um, businesses in the area that say, you know, I, I have a handful of different titles in my office. Is something like sending to you at career services, like the job descriptions, the employee work profile of what we have, would that benefit you in trying to place people, or is that overwhelming if businesses started doing that? How do you communicate and you know make your network? Mm -hmm. So if an employer doesn't specifically have like a, an internship job description, but if they let me know what they do, is that beneficial? Yes. So um, what I have found that when an employer offers to come and meet with me on campus, I mean like I would love to come out and visit every employer in our area because you all are doing so, so much amazing, so many amazing things, but I just cannot physically get out and do that um, just based on working with our students as well but if you guys wanted to meet with me that would be great send me the information absolutely that could be here's what we do at XYZ organization here are the different hats where does this fall at Emory and Henry and I may look at it and say you know what we could probably get you tapped in with a great business student but have you also thought about our civic innovation major maybe that would be cool I don't care where the discussion starts just reach out to me and I'm happy to take it from there I'll let you know oh I don't have time to to do this maybe we should do a face-to-face -face and, and start there okay. so. so I didn't want to open that can of worms I chair the business solutions unit here uh -huh. and um, there's several people come to that um, on monthly and yeah. I didn't want to say contact or give her your information if that wouldn't be let's start there or if you all are part of these uh, organizations and you say could you just come out and talk with us specifically about our needs absolutely we, we can do that okay. so so yeah I'll, I'll let you know if I can if I can't do that okay thank you Amanda are um, most of the internships a paid position by the company or is there if it's a smaller business is there any kind of assistance with that we um, so our, our who is paying for the intern if it's a paid opportunity? Um, it is the businesses. The Emory and Henry College does not have a, a sort of a pot of money that if a student wants to go do an opportunity that is an unpaid internship, we can supplement that. We don't have that at this time, but we are looking at ways to support students going out and doing those opportunities. So some of these students um, have done um, opportunities um, in Bristol, let's say. Okay, so how many, I mean, I travel from Bristol to Emory and Henry every single day, but for a student who's paying for school, th that, that can be kind of a, a game changer. So we're looking at ways we could provide that funding um, for our students. We don't have that yet, but as you as the employer, maybe you say, we'd love to be able to pay a student. We cannot do that right now, but we will work with you to get the student academic credit. But we can buy a gas card or two. We can we can supplement in that way. Would that be? I mean, you know, a, a gas card or um, here's a Chick Fil A gift card if you're passing by. Um, I shouldn't have said that. Now I'm craving Chick Fil A. Shout out to Chick Fil A. <laughs> and the key lime shake rocks. Woo! Key lime shakes. <laughs>
Great questions. Okay, great one more. Okay. And this is to the panelists. Oh, great. What advice do you have to employers based on your experience? Like one tip that they should consider if they do it, they continue doing internships that you would say for employers to consider? So I, I really appreciate that question because that was my question I was getting ready to pose to the panelists. What advice do you have for employers who are considering this? Considering an intern? Be patient and open. Um, for me, I brought new ideas from like the classroom over and they were willing to listen to me. They were like, all right, explain to me why this will work and how it will benefit and why this will like take time down or cost down or you know whatever and so and be patient because when we ask questions it's because we want to know we want to understand we want to do it correctly and if we don't feel comfortable or you you know catch a tone we don't feel like you want us to help you and so it's hard on us to want to come talk to you and um, ask these questions Definitely that. That's helpful. Yeah, um, I found it really helpful to have like a designated supervisor to be at that internship and like really that was the person that asked questions. That was where I like kind of got what I was going to be doing for the day. It was great to like have that one person that I know that I can go ask questions to at any point. So that was really awesome. And um, yeah, just be open to anything. Like I know. We're, we're very young and fresh and like want to get out there and want to like help out in any way we can. Um, so just being open to that is awesome. And so what I would say is flexibility, mm -hmm. really. Um, talk, sitting down, talking to your intern, what are you interested in? What do you want from this? And then giving the intern the flexibility to be like, you know, like with my internship as long as you're checking off your boxes go out pursue these other things here's some other people you can talk to um, and I also didn't have necessarily a set supervisor uh, which gave me a lot more flexibility there were probably four or five different people in the office that I worked in that I was working with consistently and there would be sometimes when I'd go maybe a week just working on whatever it was that I was working on with very little supervision. So know that sometimes you can just turn your intern loose and say, look, if you think you've got this, go do it. I think being goal oriented was really helpful to me, just knowing what, I'm, what I need to accomplish by the end of the day and accomplish every project, why is it necessary? And also be willing to share your knowledge. I think that's one of the things that I was looking the most when I was doing my internship was just getting as much knowledge as I could. And that's something that I really appreciate from my current internship. I know just having those conversations where it is, okay, tell me what you want to learn about today. Sometimes those times are needed for me. Just say, when they ask me, what do you learn today and what do you want to learn from today? It's really needed because there's things that maybe are mentioned through the day, through the different cases that you don't have time to truly really get, or the, yeah, get the information that you want, but during those times you can ask the questions that you previously kept. for evaluation from the employer um, for the only thing I can speak to is our formal internship program and so we have built in um, a uh, final um, evaluation it's an actual paper evaluation where we ask you to provide feedback that we share with the student how well did you did do what, your communication skills your work ethic professionalism um, we even ask you um, if you were to assign a grade to the student, what, what would you grade that student as? We also ask you as the employer to evaluate our, our internship program. How, how was this relationship as well? Um, some students are asked to provide feedback um, you know, through 
throughout the semester, but we do guarantee that you as the employer will complete an evaluation. We also have the student complete an evaluation at the end where we say, how was that employer? How was that experience? And how was your relationship with the college throughout that experience? I would love to have more set like midterm, you know, this and that those are things that we can grow with, but that's why we have to rely on you as the employer, your expertise. How do you work in your business and provide feedback? We want you to do that for our students as well. We just build in some, some checkpoints as well. I, I have one more question that I would like to pose uh, to our panelists. And then I have a couple more slides that I want to um, show you guys um, and a save the date because I've got a great opportunity for you all. So my question to the panelists, um, one, um, what does life look like right now as far as are you in job search mode? Are you working with the employer still, the internship employer? Um, I'm, I love shameless plugs. So if our students are looking for jobs, I want people to know about that. Um, and uh, so if you could just kind of say, as of right now, this is what I'm doing, heading into my last semester or my last year at Emory and Henry. Um, so I'm still doing work study for the Human Resources Department, um, but I am seeking a job, an uh, actual job. Uh, I do graduate this semester, so. What, what kind of job are you looking for? In Human Resources. Okay. <laughs> and you're from Asheboro, so you're willing to relocate? To yes. Okay. So uh, I feel like being out, being from a different state, it gives me two opportunities, so I'm very flexible on being really anywhere. So. Um, I'm probably going to graduate in December. Um, looking at my credits, I think I can graduate a semester early, so now I'm just taking classes. Um, looking to go into occupational therapy, so I'll go to OT school. Um, not in this coming year, but the next. Um, so yeah. Um, I am planning to finish up my classes in August. I've got a couple online classes to finish over summer, but I am currently looking for a part-time job locally to do while I'm doing those this summer before I start graduate school in the fall. Well, I will be graduating as of May, according to my plans, and I'm looking for jobs currently. Um, I'm open to anywhere for jobs, and I'm looking for business and finance jobs. Let's give our student panelists a round of applause. I know, I know that they will be um, around um, after the presentation. You guys can just sit there, that's fine. Um, if you guys want to come up and talk with them, um, exchange contact information if anybody has some leads for them. Um, but I wanted to put this save the date um, up here um, because I want to invite you all to a very special event on our campus. It is Friday, April 26th. We call it Ampersand Day. So I actually work in the Ampersand Center at Emory and Henry. The Ampersand is that symbol in our name that connects Emory and Henry. So we, it, it, Emory and Henry are connected by that Ampersand. Our Ampersand Center works to connect students to opportunities. So Career Services is in that, in that office. We also connect students to projects and research and experience. And one of our main things is ask our students what they're working on. Don't necessarily ask them what their major is, which is always a good starting point, but ask our students about what they're working on and let them tell you about their internship or their project or their research. Ampersand Day is our day long event where hundreds of our students are presenting the work that they've been working on over the semester, some of them over the entire year. Um, shameless plug, one of the first sessions, we will have um, students on an internship panel talking about how they interned their way to a career because these students spend that semester doing an internship. What I want you all to specifically write down is that date, Friday, um, April 26th, it runs all day. But I want to invite you as my employer specifically to a breakfast event, 7.30 to 9-ish, because our first session starts at 9. I want you to come to our campus, see our beautiful campus, let us talk with you about some of the different opportunities, and I invite you to stay 
and maybe visit a couple of the sessions that are going on. So maybe you're interested in our biology students or you're interested in our sociology students. All of our students are going to be plugged in throughout the day showing off, I don't, don't mean showing off, but showing you what they have been working on and they want employers and board members and alumni to come and ask them questions. Okay. So this is a really, really cool day. I am happy if you all um, would like to, I'll get the sign-in sheet and I'll send you all invitations to this, but I want you to go ahead and get it on your schedule. It's going to be a great time and we'd love for you to participate throughout um, the day with us. And then I also have my contact information. I also have business cards. I, I would love for you to reach out to me if you want me to come and talk with you guys or if you want to come and visit with me, if you want access to our students, if you say, can you help me to navigate this or this, please reach out to me, um, email, phone. Um, we also have an internship um, website where you can kind of find out the, the nitty gritty details about our internship program. Um, I'm going to go back to um, this slide just so that you can make sure that you get that on your, your calendar to at least come out and network with us that morning. Other questions or thoughts? Okay. Well, I'll, I'll oh, go ahead. I will say if you want to use this as a resource to share with other employers or as for employers in, uh, that are in need watching um, this will be up on YouTube later today just go to youtube.com forward slash new knowledge uh, and for those for the interns this is being streamed live to uh, the Virginia Highly Small Business Incubators Facebook page but we um, this could be a good resource too um, that you might want to share with other employers in the area that maybe are on the fence I don't understand internship and how it works so that resource will be made available in just a couple hours Thank you for that. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to be here today. Um, I thank each and every one of you all for coming. Um, I, I'd love, I do this at the end of all of my classes. Can I just get a nod if you got a little nugget of information that you can take back and say, I, I can take this back and, and probably use this. So, okay, good, good, great. Well, thank you for your time. I hope it's okay if we end a little bit early, um, but I would love for you to come up and talk with our students if you would like. Grab one of my business cards and go ahead and get Friday, April 26th on your calendar. Thank you. Oh, we got. Well, uh, thank you again to Amanda and the student panel. Um, I know I've learned a lot today. Um, I'm sure everyone else did. And if you don't care to sign in before you leave, and I think you're going to send an email. Yes, I will. Mm -hmm. Have a good afternoon. Great. Thank, Thank you. you.